Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this tutorial on how to make a layout. The art element set that I'm using is from urgentartwork.com slash skungistudio.htm. I bought the mega pack and 300 dpi because I'm going to be printing out the things that I produce. The first thing I do, I look around in the folder and decide what I'm going to have in the layout. So I've opened Zara Extreme now. The version I use is Zara Extreme Pro version 5. This is going to be printing out as a 6x4 photograph. Okay, so we're ready to start bringing in the elements that we need to create the artwork. I just click on File Import and I'm bringing in this blue piece of paper. A really cool thing that Zara Extreme has got is the clip tool. So I can just clip it to the dimensions that I want so that it fits within the 6x4. The next thing that I'd like to bring onto the page is some nice thick yellow oil paint, which I've got here. It doesn't really look very good on the monitor, but when it prints out it looks really lovely, like nice bright yellow, thick, gluggy paint. I only have a hint of it showing, so I want it to be off centre here. So. The next thing I'd like to bring in, I just click on File Import and I'd like to bring in this um, really grungy piece of cardboard. I'll bring the one in with a shadow and I'll just skew it a wee bit, I'll just, just turn it. And the wonderful thing about Zara is when, when you double click on an object you get these kind of corner handle things and you can just turn things around a wee bit and it's just all happens so quickly in Zara, it's just so user friendly. So I brought that in and I think that can sit about there. I'm just going to click on File, Import and import um, a little cutout which has a watercolour picture of a star on it. So I'll just File, Import, find that and bring that in and I'll just put this over here. The next thing I would like to put, in, put on is a crumpled up piece of paper or, or sort of a bit of a rough, it's not that crumpled, piece of lined paper and um, yeah I would like to use that and I'll just put that in the top corner, it's got some nice shadows on it and so I'm trying to sort of go for a slightly grungy effect. So I'm going to bring in one of the yellow transparent washes. And it's a wee bit big so I'm just resizing it and I'm dragging it up and the other thing that I'm going to do is copy it. Just go to um, edit and copy the name of the whatever it is and then paste it. I'm just going to play around with some transparencies because they're a wee bit sort of there and I would like them to be more subtle. So there's a a thing it looks like a glass, um, a wine glass, and you can just slide the transparency along until you've got the amount of transparency that you want. And then I'm going to, I've got the bottom one selected, and I'm just going to flip it back the other way so that they don't look so identical. And that should just give it a slightly grungier look. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go to File Import. I'm just going to import this photograph of a hand which has a transparent background. I need to reduce it in size. I'm just going to try flipping it horizontally and vertically and now I'm just grabbing the corner so that I can just turn it around a wee bit because I'd like to just have it on the corner there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is grab the clip tool. I'm just going to clip it back so that it's in line with the edge of the paper. It's really easy in Zara Extreme to take a close look. You just click on the drop down arrow next to the size. It's the set zoom factor box and you can get a close up of what you're working on. The next thing I need to bring in is this little manila paper cutout. I'm going to bring that in and then I'm going to also bring in a skewed shadow which I'm going to fiddle around with and maybe make slightly smaller and decide how it's going to sit behind it. The wonderful thing about Zara is that it's really easy to change the order of the layers. It's just simply you just got to arrange and bring to back or move forwards or move backwards or any way you want to do it. 
So I'm just playing around with the shadow. I've put it behind the front layer. Now I'm just turning it around. I just want to be sure I'm going I'm making it slightly smaller and then I bring in the next thing, which is this pencil drawing of a star, which I'm going to sit on top of the sunflower cut out and I'm going to have that there. Here's another really cool trick that you can do with Zara. So I'm just going to select the star and the sunflower manila cut out and the shadow and even the hand and I'm going to group them all together. So easy. You just go to arrange and group and then that's it. You'll see in the when you group something you'll see in the bottom left hand corner it will have the number of objects that you've selected and then you know that you've definitely got all the different objects that you want to group together so you can move them all around all at once. The next art element I'm going to import will be the frame. The frame has a slight shadow under the corners which makes it look slightly like it's curling up a wee bit and I'm just quickly reducing it and skewing it and moving it into position and of course arranging it so that it will be behind the the hand with the sunflower and the shadow. So I'm now going to import the paper clip and I'm just changing it around. I'm vertically flipping it and horizontally flipping it and I'm going to reduce it in size. Now I need to look at it really closely. I can get even closer. I can go up to 1000% in Zara and even closer if I need to. It's just wonderful. See, I want the paper clip to look like it's clipping the photo to the paper so I just need to move it. I need to check that it's exactly in position. Okay, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this. I'm actually going to import a really big piece of paper in, reduce it right down so that it looks like a, a wee note. I'm going to then import a separate shadow. The separate shadows are a really good idea because it means that you can take anything and give it a bit of life and I'm going to play with that and stretch that and maybe make it slightly transparent just so that it looks like the flat piece of paper is not flat and you can have the shadow any way you want you know you can decide which way the lights coming down and just yeah and of course in Zara being able to make it transparent so easily really helps as well then on top of that I'm going to add the popular upside down staple and just play with the size of that and then that's going to make it look like there's a, another note stapled on top. The photo that I'm using for this is a photo of some food. I'm just going with a the food theme here. Really this layout could be used for anything. It could be used for a recipe book or a brag book, even a calendar picture if you wanted to make your own calendar for a record of your gardening or it could be used for a record of your hobby or a student ID thing or to illustrate a story or it could be used for a student anything. So really the, the list is endless. If you had this particular art element set, Skunji Studio, you could you could make a whole series of layouts all of, with the same look and the same colour palette. This is just one small idea. Anyway, I'm using this picture, so what I need to do is I need to crop it, reduce it, and angle it so that I can put it uh, behind the photo edge. And of course I also need to arrange it, move it backwards so that it's behind the photo. I'll probably need to move it backwards several times because the frame photo is not at the very front. It's not the top layer. So here goes. Now. I'm adding my recipe, I'm just going to do it in super super fast motion but basically what I'm doing is I'm just adding text to the note and to other areas and then that's it, there's my recipe. I hope you can make something fabulous with your Zara Extreme and Be Urgent Artworks Gunji Studio.